Okay, I'm gonna be honest. If I had to let every intrusive, limiting belief stop me from what I want to do, I would be absolutely nowhere in life. So, here I am. Making the jump, taking the step, and doing something out of my comfort zone. Hello all, so welcome to my very first episode of A Little Atypical. My name is Elijah J, and honestly, I'm going to be completely straightforward and say I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, not at all. I'm here in my room with a mic recording, and honestly... It's terrifying. I guess because it's the first episode, I'm gonna just give a brief introduction and then get right into it. So I am 20 years old. I'm still a college student going into my senior year. And honestly, it's exciting. But I had this like epiphany type moment where I was like, okay, I just spent about three years of my life already in school and school is all I ever known. I dedicated myself to being an A, B student, trying to get the best grades possible. I need to do all these things. I need to do this, I need to do that. And I feel so much pressure right now. When I was younger, when I was about 18 years old, I had a blog. And that was kind of my outlet for those feelings. But ever since we went back in person to school, because during, I'm so sorry if you can hear the background, but during the pandemic, I was able to get so much done. I was able to raise my grades. I was able to work on my blog and change it up and just adopted the way I want to and then I worked three internships in the summer and had to return to school and pretty much hasn't been the same since then. I think one of the biggest takeaways anyone can get from that is you need to still give yourself time and space to really express yourself and not just work, work, work and you can't make your life revolve around work if that makes sense so if you can tell by the title I want to talk about taking space and taking action because you know what I always see that in the communities I want to go into because like I said I had a blog it was actually a wellness blog and I am one of the girls who love all the things wellness and stuff like that but whenever I think of the wellness space I see the same people talking about the same things and I just feel like the perspective of wellness is extremely limited and since my minor is in integrative wellness I figured this is one of my huge interest, something I'm extremely passionate about, and honestly, something I always want to talk about in my life. So, I decided to make this a little atypical, because my whole life, I feel like I always tried so hard to find a place somewhere. And, you know, I always hear that phrase in the wellness community, take up space and everything like that. Like, don't be afraid to take up space. But when I, th- when I first heard the phrase, I thought of it as like, take up space in existing spaces, basically. I never had a space growing up that I actually felt comfortable in. Like, I know some people have their family, and they're close to their family, and they have a community within their family, even though they have the times when they fight, they ultimately love their family, which is like what every sitcom, every TV show always shown. 
but I never had that. And then if it's not your family, it's your friends, you know, where it's like your friends kind of become like your chosen family and that becomes like your community. And sometimes that is true, that you form close enough bonds with people that friends kind of make up for the fact if you don't have a good family life. But honestly, one thing I learned when I was like starting out doing the whole blog thing and stuff like that, I felt like I was more supported by absolute strangers who ultimately are trying to do the same thing, like the blogging community or people trying to be con- like content creators, you know? If you don't have friends like that or a family that's supportive, like they're not going to get in, they're not going to support you. And honestly, the whole friends and family conversation, that's for something else and probably a future podcast episode. So yeah, I saw like a TikTok the other day and it was like this person, they were talking about how individualistic traits are not celebrated enough like because they were responding to a video where someone said oh everyone is the same nowadays and then the person responded like yeah people are the same but they're not the same because they want to be the same they're the same because only certain things are celebrated and when someone is an individual they tend to get bullied and then that had me in such a deep thought because yeah when you're different it takes a long time for some people to really appreciate those differences i am a person to believe like eventually yeah they will see you for you and see your heart is pure and see that the things you want to do and the things you have to say yeah they may be a little out there they may be a little weird but honestly I feel like we need more out there and weird and different because there was no point in my life I ever felt that like I fit in and even like when I go on these online spaces it's so cool to see like when people have things similar to me like similar interests but then I ultimately still have a hard time communicating about them so this is now my way of communicating those interests and trying to how do I say this take up space but I'm not trying to fit into the existing space because yeah the reason why I wanted to start a podcast well it's been something on my mind since like I started to adore a podcast which was like probably around 20 19 but I already had a blog and I was like okay this blog is my space I don't need to do anything else And then I tried YouTube and (laughs) the thing about YouTube is I do love it. I do love the idea of it, but I feel like I don't even have enough time or energy to do it. And that's why I'm not deeply pursuing YouTube right now. And I also feel like I need more time to really figure out me and that it comes through in my videos. And I also need more time and not be overwhelmed with school. But hearing me say this is like, yeah, I want to take action. Because the only way you can be comfortable with you and who you want to become and bridge that gap is honestly doing things outside your comfort zone and not making excuses. Because at the end of the day, yeah, it does get busy and... It's hard to balance all these things because trust me, as a college student, I know. Because you know what's like the most frustrating thing is when people bring up the fact like I don't work or have that assumption. That's like one thing I was like dealing with this week when my so-called cousin decided to say like something extremely rude to my family and that was one of them that because I don't work I could do this but the fact is my cousin doesn't even talk to me and she's actually wrong because as a college student yeah 
I do work. I take 20 credits because I'm not only doing a major, I am pursuing approximately four minors because I'm an overachiever and I like trying new things to really figure myself out because I feel like I went into college like with this idea but quickly like that idea got disrupted by like my second semester when well it's a weird thing because in my second semester also that's when the pandemic started so then I had like a whole self-reflection time and really figuring out what I'm interested in and what I want to give my energy to so We learn through trial and error, and I'm also very stubborn, so I am going to complete the degree I went in for, but I feel like I have, like, all these other interests that I didn't even know I had, and some things I feel like I just want to do for myself, and some things I just want to do for myself, and other things I want to do for work and I want those to be separate things so like I had like this thought because I'm a senior and I'm going to graduate that I don't want to I don't want to do all the creative work for another person Like, I love creating. I like trying new platforms. I like trying new things. And I don't want to do that for anyone else. I want to maybe do the strategy for it, look up the data for it, maybe analyze it, give give ideas and suggestions. But I don't necessarily want to be the creator of it. And it took me a long time to figure that out because I've done so much creative work and I thought, oh, yeah, this is cool. But... Yeah, it is cool, but one thing that kind of turns me off from the idea is when I realized, like, you have, like, all these, like, talented people who create amazing things every day and actually is the brains behind a company, and they don't even get the recognition for it, don't get recognized for their own ideas, and someone else gets celebrated for it, even though now it's being mass-produced, like, they're still not getting credited for their amazing thought and something that really connects with people because you know the companies and the people who created these companies how many years ago they didn't have a lot of things in mind and now that we're progressing as people and now that there's social media it's also like how do I explain this it's also like we have to push the agenda a lot more than what they initiated and the thing is the newer brands that are coming out already have that ingrained in their company. And I feel like that's why a lot of people do generate towards newer brands because they already had that thought process. Like, oh, for example, we were so excited when Rihanna came out with a bunch of new shades, right? That mostly matched almost everyone's skin type. And then I think it was Ariana Grande's brand, Rem Beauty, that is now like the most shade range. So, again, but when you think of, like, older makeup brands, they, especially people of color, had especially a hard time even finding something to resonate with them. And they're always, like, outside of the space, which I guess that's what I'm getting to because I am a beauty major. So bear bear with me with this example that people had to go out and do their own thing to create their own space to have those initiative down because they saw something and didn't like it and felt like they didn't fit in. And instead of trying to work with a brand, instead of trying to insert themselves that way, they did their own thing. And I feel like that's essentially what all people should learn from is stop trying to squeeze into this box because so many people are afraid to be different. Because yeah, they get ridiculed, they get bullied, but at the end of the day, people are not gonna like you like let that sit in for a second people will always find a reason not to like you so instead of like draining your energy trying to appease everyone and this is something I struggle with too because as someone who likes to make someone happy I feel like for a long time I was a people pleaser and I never felt like anything I did was enough that eventually I started to feel like I'm, I'm just gonna do what I want Because at the end of the day, 
if I do one thing and it makes someone happy, another person may not like it. So instead of trying to appease everyone, I'm going to find who really sees me. And hopefully I can do that with this podcast that I find people who don't have a restricted idea. that are open-minded to different conversations and different perspectives because I feel like that's what I am I'm I will say yeah I'm as a person I do recognize like my bad traits which is I'm stubborn but I'm strong on my beliefs but that doesn't mean I'm not open to hearing and seeing other perspectives because I always like knowing how people think and why they think that way because I find that fascinating that's why I also want to work in strategy hopefully someday because it's more than just oh this is an idea but why does the idea work how does it work and it's like that and when you're trying to do all the things and take up space make sure when you are doing that that you don't get stuck in the ideas and the details because I feel like that's what happened to me for the longest time of why I've been so afraid to not take action and why I decided I can't do a blog I would make up excuses like hey I'm in school I'm already busy and stuff like that I'm always going to be busy I'm always going to have something going on that's not that's not excuse I want to use anymore and school is eventually gonna end and what am I gonna end up with the job market especially for people of color is kind of disheartening I will say that because before I was like super excited to be in the beauty industry and like go into that space until I realized like it's not going to be an easy path because you want to hear a funny story well not funny but like interesting I applied for a job right and I didn't just like make up a resume I actually hired out a resume writer because honestly I was so stressed out and my mentor at the time they were like um what did they say to me? They said that I come off as way too scattered and all over the place. And that's the thing, because I have so many interests, I feel like that's naturally how I come off because it's not ever going to be one thing for me. I know that's what businesses want. They want to hear, oh, I'm this, I did this my entire life and this is my job and this is my life and this is all my life is. But I don't believe it should be that way. Because if you don't have multiple interests, you're kind of like stuck in this one way of thinking and I'm just not that and I'm never going to be. So anyways, so I apply to this job, right? And I find it really interesting because they, the role was for a social media role. And you know what's another thing I find interesting about social media roles is the fact like, especially my generation I've been online since I would say hmm, I would say like 11 years old because that's when Instagram started I wasn't really the kid who used Facebook that much Facebook wasn't my thing it was never going to be my thing but I loved Instagram and I remember getting nearly to I got up to like 9.2k before I got bored of that account and then I just made a whole account all over again but yeah so I would say like technically I grew up with social media and all these social media platforms I was always like fascinated by them right so the role was for a social media intern and specifically intern not for a job just an internship something that a person is just supposed to learn right tell me why they said I wasn't qualified enough to do an internship that's weird right because it's an internship I think 
the point of an internship is for it to be a learning experience, right? So it doesn't make sense when you're denied for a job because you're not, well, an internship because you're not qualified enough. And it's not like I didn't have any experience. Like I said, I worked three internships one summer. Um, Before that, I had summer jobs like throughout high school. So I definitely did have experience, but they said I wasn't qualified enough, which is weird because people in my major also got accepted to them with, they said they didn't have much experience in the industry and they were able to get an interview and able to meet people and in return intern for them and get into it that way. And from like thinking about that experience of trying to fit into a space made me realize like I shouldn't rely on just solely what I was educated on or what they told us to do because it's not gonna be easy especially if you're going into an industry where you have no connections and you kind of have to make opportunities for yourself. So, please keep that in mind. With anything, if you want to do something, you have to make your own opportunities. You can't just wait for life to happen. I think what most people confuse about manifestation is, yeah, it's part of it is wanting things and talking to the universe and everything like that. But the other part is taking action. And I feel like a lot of us get stuck in the planning phase of, okay, if we do this, we got to do this for this to happen. And then this and then that. And then we're so wrapped up in the details that it becomes to a point where you want things to be perfect. You want things to be good. But then you kind of get stuck trying to make it perfect to a point where you don't give yourself a chance to like really mess up either. And I guess that's what I want you to take away from this episode. Take up space. Don't get stuck in the details. Take action. Let yourself fail. And don't be afraid to fail because the reason why I think so many people are even afraid to fail is because we never had a space for us that was okay for us either it was like our parents or something like that that like we never wanted to do anything wrong we never wanted to upset people but once I started seeing shortcomings as like not necessarily failing but as like eye-opening moments it really like put everything in perspective for me so yeah I feel like this episode because obviously it is the first episode that it's not going to be perfect. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even fully know what's going to be my process in this. Part of me wants it. So maybe I do like tarot card pulls. Or or I can do like what I'm grateful for. Or maybe like say like what acting in life I'm working on. Or stuff like that. Because I do appreciate when people have that communication. When things aren't perfect but they're trying to learn and that's what everything is because my goal is to take up space and kind of have an art outlet that doesn't involve me writing even though I do still love writing but for now that's going to be on hiatus until I feel like I have the space to do it all over again And who knows, maybe this will allow me to do more TikToks. And honestly, I just want to figure out how this is going to work. I am open to so much suggestions. But for now, I just want to thank you for taking time to listen. And I'm hoping to improve this in some shape or form. I don't know what I'm going to aim for in terms of like episode length because I want to create a space for 
different people like people to share their stories maybe for people and I want this to be like a conversation I think in the future maybe I would want guests maybe because originally I didn't even want to do this without a co-host until I realized like that was like my excuse to not take action so we're gonna have more structured episodes I came up with a few ideas but until next time I'm Elijah J and this is a little atypical and I hope you come back so hey and have a good day evening or night whenever you're listening to this and I hope to have more episodes on Thursdays thank you bye